What's up, what's up? It's your girl, Layla Page. Thanks for stopping by my channel. Welcome to my crazy life. Please don't forget to subscribe for updates and notifications. Love ya. Hey, kings and queens. Thanks for tuning in. This video is to give honor and homage to the people that came before me, the queens that paved the way through racism and trials and tribulations. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you and happy Black History Month. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. Queen Ammoniranus is one of the most famous Meroitic queens because of her role in leading the Kushite army against the Romans in a war that lasted three years, 25 BC to 22 BC. This war is largely responsible for halting Rome's southward expansion in Africa. Now imagine that. She stopped them from enslaving her people. Okay, she was like, no, not over here. <laughs> okay, go queen. The Agogi, also known as the Dahomey Amazons by Europeans, were an all-female group of warriors who existed in the West African Kingdom of Dahomey, today known as Benin. So they were the original Wonder Women. The Amazonian queens started in Agogi. Cathay Williams, born in Independence, Missouri, around 1844, some accounts say 1842, to a slave mother and a free father. Her name was Cathay Williams before she was known as William Cathay. She was the first African-American female solitaire to enlist with the army. She was the first African-American woman to enlist in the army and did so by disguising herself as a man. Though she was hospitalized five times, no one ever discovered her secret. Can y'all imagine how nervous she was in the hospital, hoping nobody know that she got lady parts? Boy, I bet she was sweating, okay? <laughs> But hey, she did it. You go, queen. Abby Fisher. Abby Fisher claimed to fame. She authored the oldest known cookbook by a former slave. This southern belle was raised in plantation kitchens of South Carolina. Fisher's culinary gifts matured. And by the time she and her growing family gained their freedom, they moved to San Francisco where her catering skills became well known. A household name and award-winning cook, Fisher soon turned into business owner of Mrs. Abby Fisher and Company later renamed Mrs. Abby Fisher, pickle manufacturer. Y'all know Miss Abby was a good woman. You gonna enslave me and then you want me to cook for you? Oh, baby, I would have been a little razzle-dazzle up in that food. So yes, I know Abby is in heaven. Rest in peace, queen. Anne Lowe. Anne Cole Lowe. December 14th, 1898 to February 25th, 1981, was the first African-American to become a noted fashion designer. One. Lowe's designs were popular among upper-class women for five decades from the 1920s through the 1960s. She was best known for designing the ivory silk taffeta wedding dress worn by Jacqueline Bouvier when she married John F. Kennedy in 1953. Thank you, Queen, for paving the way in the fashion industry. We appreciate you. We appreciate you showing up and showing out. Thank you, Queen. We give you your flowers. Zelda Valdez. Zelda Valdez was born Zelda Christian Barber in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, and grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Two, she trained as a classical pianist at the Catholic Conservatory of Music. Three, in the early 1920s, Valdez started to work in the tailoring shop of her uncle in White Plains, New York. Around the same time, Valdez began working as a stock girl at a high-end boutique. She eventually worked her way up to selling and making alterations becoming the shop's first black sales clerk and tailor. She is credited for designing the original Playboy Bunny waitress costumes. Now, it's mighty funny that Hugh Hefner barely allowed African Americans to wear the Playboy Bunny outfit, but it originated from a black queen. <laughs> we give you your flowers. Clara Brown was an ex-slave who became a philanthropist, entrepreneur, and humanitarian in Denver and Central City. She is said to be the first African-American woman to have traveled west during the Colorado Gold Rush. Can you guys imagine what strength and wisdom it took to endure those elements of the weather to be the first black person to do anything in those times? It was crazy. I can only imagine. We give you your flowers, Queen. Bridget Mason. She started life as a slave. But after winning her freedom in court in 1856, she moved to Los Angeles and became a nurse and midwife. Claim to fame. 
she became one of the first prominent citizens and landowners in Los Angeles during the 1850s and 60s. Mason is also recognized as establishing the first African Methodist Episcopal Church, the oldest African-American church in the city. Back then, they say Miss Mason was something like a farmer. You know what I'm saying? A cowgirl. And you know I love it. Ride them, cowgirl. You go, Miss Mason. We give you your flowers. Phyllis Wheatley, the girl who was to be named Phyllis Wheatley, was captured in West Africa and taken to Boston by slave traders in 1761. Phyllis Wheatley, despite spending much of her life enslaved, Phyllis Wheatley was the first African-American and second woman, after Anne Bradstreet, to publish a book of poems. We give you your flowers. Thank you, Miss Wheatley, for paving the way. Some of her poems include His Excellence, General Washington, and A Farewell to America. Check it out. Sarah E. Good was the first to design and hold the patent for a folding cabinet bed. Her bed doubled as a writing desk when the bed was in the upright position, a function that is still incorporated in the design of many modern Murphy beds. Now imagine that. She helped build cabinets and beds, okay? In one design, mixed with a combo with a swoop-de-doop, okay? We give you your flowers, queen. Miriam Elizabeth Benjamin, September 16, 1861 to 1947, was an American school teacher and inventor. In 1888, she obtained a patent for the gong and signal chair for hotels, becoming the second African-American woman to receive a patent under the pseudonym E.B. Miriam. Benjamin also composed musical pieces, including songs and marches for piano and band. In 1895, the Boston-based magazine Women's Era reported Miss Miriam Benjamin has composed a march which is now upon the market, the Boston Elite Quickstep. Now, if you ask me, Miss Benjamin was something like a renaissance woman. You know what I'm saying? She did the music. She was an inventor. She was just brilliant. Okay? Let me give you your flowers, queen. Marie Van Britten Brown, October 30th, 1922 to February 2nd, 1999, was an American nurse and innovator. In 1966, she invented a video home security system. One, along with her husband Albert Brown an electronics technician. Two, in the same year, they applied for a patent for their innovative security system, which was granted in 1969. Her innovation has had a huge impact on the entire security system. Her idea has expanded beyond just security for those at home, and her ideas can be seen with security systems in businesses around the world. Brown was born in Jamaica, Queens, New York. Three, she died there at the age of 76 in 1999. So you guys with the blink and the ring security cameras for your home and business, you can thank this queen right here. We never heard about this kind of black history, right? We give you a flowers, queen. We ain't forgot about you. Madam C.J. Walker, born Sarah Breedlove, December 23rd, 1867 to May 25th, 1919, was an African-American entrepreneur, philanthropist, and political and social activist. She is recorded as the first female self-made millionaire in America in the Guinness Book of World Records. Walker made her fortune by developing and marketing a line of cosmetics and hair care products for black women through the business she founded, Madam C.J. Walker Manufacturing Company. She became known also for her philanthropy and activism. She made financial donations to numerous organizations such as the NAACP. Now, don't those words just sound so good together? Self-made millionaire? Oh my God, you go queen. I don't care what you heard about the rumors. She is going to be the first and only black female millionaire that I acknowledge. Okay. Madeline Saji Jackson, gorgeous exotic dancer. Saji was one of the top exotic dancers in the 1940s. Saji was as sexy as a dancer could be, but she added class, glamour and real dancing ability to her performances besides just wiggling and swinging hips. She was thin but used every inch of her body in dance. Her dancing was often described as poetry in motion. She told a story with her dancing. In the musical Jivin in Bebop Saji is one of the featured performers. Her only screen appearance. Her beauty and dancing talents can be enjoyed. Thank you, Queen, for paving the way for me to be able to feel sexy in my own skin and to dance like nobody else is in the room. Thank you, Queen, for your confidence. I give you your flowers. Janet Collins, March 7, 1917 to May 28, 2003, was an African-American ballet dancer, 
choreographer, and teacher. She performed on Broadway, in films, and appeared frequently on television. When Collins was just 15 years old, she auditioned for the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo, and was told by the director that she could join the company only if you paint your face and body white. Collins turned down the job, but later went on to perform lead roles on Broadway in Cole Porter musicals. Then in 1951, after spending a year in the Course de Ballet, Collins made history as the first and only black dancer to be promoted to prima ballerina status in the Metropolitan Opera. Can you guys imagine all the pain and ridicule this queen had to endure to be able to chase her dreams? What do you mean, paint my face and body white? That is insane. Thank you, queen. We give you your flowers. Billie Holiday born Eleonora Fagan, April 7, 1915 to July 17, 1959, was an American jazz and swing music singer. Nicknamed Lady Day by her friend and music partner, Lester Young. Holiday had an innovative influence on jazz music and pop singing. Thank you, Queen, for paving the way for Rihanna, Sierra, Beyonce, and a lot of other celebrities to be able to get on the stage and to be able to give us music. Thank you, Queen, for paving the way. We appreciate you. Jamisetta Hawkins, January 25th, 1938 to January 20th, 2012, known professionally as Etta James was an American singer who performed in various genres, including gospel, blues, jazz, R&B, rock and roll, and soul. Starting her career in 1954, she gained fame with hits such as The Wallflower, At Last, Tell Mama, Something's Got a Hold on Me, and I'd Rather Go Blind. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame called hers one of the greatest voices of her century and says she is forever the matriarch of blues. Thank you, Queen, for your timeless music and your inspirational lyrics. We thank you for paving the way. Even through your trials and tribulations, you still gave us a major comeback, and we thank you, Queen. Josephine Baker was an American-born French dancer, singer, and actress. Her career was centered primarily in Europe, mostly in her adopted France. She was the first black woman to star in a major motion picture, the 1927 silent film Siren of the Tropics. Directed by Mario Nalpas. I'm sure we all know who the famous Josephine Baker is, but she still needs her flowers nonetheless. So we thank you, Queen, for paving the way. In 1955, Raven Wilkinson became the first African-American woman to receive a contract to dance full-time with Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo of New York City. She was promoted to soloist during her second season and performed with the company for six years d. Thanks for showing us some black girl magic. We give you your flowers, Queen. Thank you. Bessie Coleman lived January 26, 1892 to April 30, 1926. She was an early American civil aviator. She was the first African-American woman and first Native American to hold a pilot license. Thank you, Miss Coleman, for showing us that the sky is the limit. We give you your flowers. Happy Black History Month, Queen. Sister Rosetta Tharp. Sister Rosetta Tharp was an American singer and guitarist. She gained popularity in the 1930s and 1940s with her gospel recordings, characterized by a unique mixture of spiritual lyrics and electric guitar. For her role as Mammy in Gone with the Wind, 1939, she won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, becoming the first African American to win an Oscar. Not only did she play the electric guitar, she was the first African-American woman to win an Oscar? That's crazy. You go, queen. We give you your flowers. Madeline Manning Mims, born January 11, 1948, is a former American runner. When she was three years old, she was diagnosed with spinal meningitis and not expected to live. She recovered, but was consistently sick until she was a teen. Between 1967 and 1981 she won 10 national titles and set a number of American records. She participated in the 1968, 1972, and 1976 Summer Olympics. She likely also would have participated in the 1980 Games in Moscow, had they not been boycotted by the United States. At the 1968 Olympics she won a gold medal in the 800 meters, one of only two American women to win this event. Yes, Queen, I commend you for fighting through your childhood sickness and becoming one of the greatest. I appreciate you. I give you your flowers. Thank you.
Alice Marie Coachman Davis, November 9, 1923 to July 14, 2014, was an American athlete. She specialized in high jump and was the first black woman to win an Olympic gold medal. Thank you, Queen, for jumping to all new heights. We give you your flowers. Thank you, Queen. Kim Crabb. She played soccer at South Lakes High School in Reston in the early 1980s and won the Women's NCAA National Championship at George Mason University in 1985. Her championship success at the college level propelled her to the top becoming the first African-American female to play for the U.S. Women's National Team. Thank you, Ms. Crabb, for sticking it out and being tough and kicking ass with the best of them. We give you your flowers. Brianna Scurry is a legend. A two-time Olympic gold medalist, 1996 and 2004, World Cup champion, 1999, and a first black female inductee in National Hall of Fame. The first female inducted into the Hall of Fame? Now that's major moves. We thank you, Queen. We give you your flowers. You earned it. Thank you. Lucia May Harris, February 10, 1955 to January 18, 2022 was an American professional basketball player. Harris is considered to be one of the pioneers of women's basketball. She played for Delta State University and won three consecutive Association for Intercollegiate Athletics for Women AIAW national championships, the predecessors to the National Collegiate Athletic Association NCAA championships. From 1975 to 1977, she played professional basketball with the Houston Angels of the Women's Professional Basketball League. WBL, and was the first and only woman ever officially drafted by the National Basketball Association, NBA, a men's professional basketball league. For her achievements, Harris was inducted to the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame and Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. Growing up, that was always my dream to be the first female drafted to the NBA because I had no clue that it had already been done before because it is not a part of our black history that is taught in schools. We must do better. I commend you. I give you your flowers. Thank you, Queen. Born Joanne Deborah Byron July 16, 1947 in Flushing, Queens. She grew up in New York City and Wilmington, North Carolina. After graduation, she began using the name Asada Shakur and briefly joined the Black Panther Party. She then joined the BLA, a loosely knit offshoot of the Black Panthers which engaged in an armed struggle against the U.S. government through tactics such as robbing banks and K-police officers and dealers. Between 1971 and 1973, she was charged with several crimes and was the subject of a multi-state manhunt. In May, 1973, Shakur was arrested after being wounded in a shootout on the New Jersey Turnpike while serving a life sentence for murder. Shakur escaped in 1979 with assistance from the BLA and members of the May 19th Communist Organization, from the Clinton Correctional Facility for Women in Union Township, New Jersey, now the Edna Mahan Correctional Facility for Women. She surfaced in Cuba in 1984, where she was granted political asylum. Shakur has lived in Cuba since, despite U.S. government efforts to have her returned. She has been on the FBI Most Wanted Terrorists list since 2013 as Joanne Deborah Chesimard and was the first woman to be added to this. Some people may not agree with her actions, but she did what she had to do to get justice. I commend you, Queen. I give you your flowers. Mary Jackson Mary Jackson born April 9, 1921 to February 11, 2005 was an American mathematician and aerospace engineer at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics NACA, which in 1958 was succeeded by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. She took advanced engineering classes and, in 1958, became NASA's first black female engineer. We give you your flowers, Queen. Check out the book or movie Hidden Figures. Thanks, guys. Hope you're enjoying. May Carol Jemison is an American engineer, physician, and former NASA astronaut. She became the first black woman to travel into space when she served as a mission specialist aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor in 1992. We thank you for your bravery, Queen. We give you your flowers. Molly Williams. Molly Williams was the first known female and first known black firefighter in the United States. An African-American, she was a slave of the New York City merchant Benjamin Imar, 
She was affiliated with the Oceanus Engine Company No. 11 in Lower Manhattan. To call her a hero would be an understatement. She is much more than that. She is a pioneer of excellence. We thank you, Queen, for your sacrifice and achievements. We give you your flowers. Georgia Ann Robinson, May 12, 1879 to September 21, 1961, was an American police officer and community worker who was the first African-American woman to be appointed a police officer at the Los Angeles Police Department. She was also one of the first black police women to be hired in the country. Her police career ended when she permanently lost her sight after being injured by a prisoner. Robinson was also an activist who founded the Sojourner Truth Home a shelter for women and girls, while working on the force. After retiring, Robinson continued her community activism, working with the NAACP, volunteering in shelters, and campaigning to desegregate schools and beaches. Thanks to this queen and her accomplishments, I'm able to go to the beach and enjoy myself without watching my back and being worried about being at the wrong beach. We give you your flowers. Thank you, queen. Jane Matilda Boland, born April 11, 1908 to January 8, 2007, was an American attorney and judge. She was the first black woman to graduate from Yale Law School, the first to join the New York City Bar Association and the first to join the New York City Law Department. Boland became the first black woman to serve as a judge in the United States when she was sworn into the bench of the New York City Domestic Relations Court in 1939. Being that she was the first African-American judge, I am sure she was judged a lot. Thank you, Queen, for your accomplishments. We give you your flowers. Eunice Roberta Hunton Carter was born July 16, 1899 to January 25, 1970, was an American lawyer. She was one of New York's first female African-American lawyers and one of the first African-American prosecutors in the United States. Carter soon established a career in both law and international politics. In 1935 Carter became the first black woman assistant district attorney in the state of New York. Carter later became active in the United Nations, serving on committees that advocated improving the status of women in addition to her work for the UN. She also served on the executive committee of the International Council of Women, an organization with representatives from 37 countries, U.S. Women's Unit, 9 additionally. She served on the board of the YWCA. We can never truly comprehend the things that she had to endure to become the first in her era of time. Those same things we have to endure now in 2023. So you can only imagine how bad they were then. We give you your flowers, Queen. Thank you. Condoleezza Rice, born November 14, 1954, is an American diplomat and political scientist who is the current director of the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. A member of the Republican Party, she previously served as the 66th United States Secretary of State from 2005 to 2009 and as the 19th U.S. National Security Advisor from 2001 to 2005. Rice was the first female African-American Secretary of State and the first woman to serve as National Security Adviso. When it comes to politics, it's always quite messy. In this case, it's no different, but I still commend you, Queen. For the things that you have accomplished. Thank you. We give you your flowers. Kamala Davy Harris is an American politician and attorney who is the 49th and current Vice President of the United States. She is the first female Vice President and the highest ranking female official in U.S. history, as well as the first African American and first Asian American Vice President. Regardless of your political views, she still deserves her flowers, and I'm going to give them to her. You deserve them, Queen. Thank you for your accomplishments. We give you your flowers. Michelle LaVon Robinson Obama is an American attorney and author who served as First Lady of the United States from 2009 to 2017 as the wife of former President Barack Obama. She was the first African-American woman to serve in this position, raised on the south side of Chicago. Obama is a graduate of Princeton University and Harvard Law School. In her early legal career, she worked at the law firm Sidley Austin where she met Barack Obama. She subsequently worked in nonprofits and as the Associate Dean of Student Services at the University of Chicago as well as the Vice President for Community and External Affairs of the University of Chicago Medical Center. 
Thank you, Mrs. Michelle Obama, for being the hardest working first lady in the office. We appreciate you. Thank you. And like Martin Luther King, I have a dream that one day a change going to come. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned something about Black history. Spread the word. Spread the knowledge. Love, light, and peace. Amen. Hey, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to spread love and light. Love, Layla. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button for notifications of new videos.